Scotland's native woodlands are simply defined as those where over half of the dominant tree species are naturally occurring here in Scotland and haven't been introduced by man. Now, different trees grow under different environmental conditions, so experts have divided Scotland's native woodlands into six different types. In this film, we're going to be looking more closely at lowland mixed deciduous woodlands. Lowland mixed deciduous woodlands are amongst the most diverse of our native woodland types. They're usually dominated by oak, ash and hazel mixtures, but also common are species like witch elm, alder, heen and birch. And today, as a result of introductions by people in the past, we have non-native species like sycamore, beech and several conifers. Many of these woods have been used for thousands of years for timber and other wood products, as well as pasture and shelter for animals. Others have survived because they are on sites such as kloofs and dells by lowland rivers which are inaccessible and unsuitable for farming or development. Lowland mixed deciduous woods overlap with several other types of native woodlands, for example on deeper soils where upland mixed ash woods are very similar. The National Vegetation Classification, or NVC, provides a common language in which the character and value of the vegetation of Britain can be understood. In this system, the main MVC types for lowland mixed deciduous woods are W8 and W10. This type occurs on alkaline and neutral soils, many of which are heavy and poorly drained. Oak and ash dominate most of these woods, witch elm is common and hazel is the commonest understory species. Dog's mercury is the characteristic field layer dominant, but wood avens, ramsons, primroses and wood anemone are common. In areas where sycamore is present nearby, it often colonises this woodland type. These are found on acid soils, ranging from poorly drained clays to lighter, base-poor sandy loams. Oak and birch dominate, with rowan, holly, guian and some ash, hazel, hawthorn and witch elm. The ground floor is less diverse than in the previous type, with bluebell, dog violet, broad buckler fern, bramble or bracken dominating at different seasons. There is, however, considerable variability in the woodlands growing on these site types. From the early Middle Ages, many managed lowland mixed woods supplied mainly local markets with fuel wood, charcoal, fencing materials and coppice products. Growing amongst the coppice stems were large, straighter trees known as standards, most of which were oak, grown for timber. The species composition of these woodlands has also changed over time and landowners planted a whole variety of introduced species, both for timber and ornamental reasons in the 18th and 19th centuries. Coppicing had largely ceased by the 20th century, and many oaks were cut out during wartime. Many of these oaks were replaced after World War II with introduced conifer species. Other woods fell into neglect and no management at all during this period. Many of these woods can still produce timber for construction and furniture and also firewood. Long neglected woods often have low timber quality, but the next generation can be managed to make something better. Many characteristic species are also ancient woodland indicators. Some of the most characteristic and abundant species, such as bluebell, wood anemone, dog's mercury, yellow dead nettle and wood sorrel, occur mainly in the ancient woods over much of the lowlands. The spring displays of bluebell, for which many British woods are internationally famous, may be partly a product of coppicing in ancient lowland mixed deciduous woods. Invasive plants such as Himalayan balsam, Japanese knotweed and rhododendron ponticum are spreading and are difficult to control. Unless action is taken, the impact on the ancient ground flora could be very serious indeed over the long term. The likely loss of ash due to Chilara fraxinia brings with it another threat, coming so soon after the loss of elm. Lowland mixed deciduous woodlands are ancient, beautiful and useful, and this part of Scotland's fantastic natural heritage is probably right on your doorstep, because these woods are rarely far from cities and towns. Take a walk and see what you can find.